Jesus is wonderful, and that's why I gladly serve him. And I do advise you, always love Jesus, walk with Jesus, stand with Jesus, because he will stand for you. He's already done that. He died for you on the cross. He delivered you, redeemed you. He has opened the doorway to the Father, I mean, and to the blessings of God. What a wonderful Savior. This is Pastor Henry Madawa, and this is the voice of victory. Last week, I spoke to you about uh, the, when God came to Adam and he was asking, uh, who told you you were naked? Because he had had the wrong information from the wrong person. He got the wrong revelation, so to speak. And that destroyed his life and our lives as well because of that. You see, wrong information can kill you, or rather information from the wrong source. You know, the Bible says in chapter 5 of the book of Mark, if wrong information can kill you, then the right information can save you. You know, there was this woman with an, with an issue of blood, and he had suffered for 12 years. And the Bible says he had spent all he had, she had spent all he had on physicians and spent all, and things became worse. You see, she was acting on the knowledge that she had, that physicians are the only way out when you have an issue of blood. But one day something happened. The Bible says in verse 27 of chapter 5 of the book of Mark, it says, when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his garment, I shall be whole. What happened? She heard different information from a different source. And that changed the actions. Instead of going and borrowing money and selling another thing, she changed the actions. And this particular action brought results. You see, that's what's important in life. Change your thinking. Some people get saved, but they don't change their worldview. And that's dangerous because you are saved, you love Jesus, but your worldview is not changed, your thinking is not changed, your approach is not changed, and you, you are one of the most miserable people in the world. On one side, you love Jesus. On the other side, your worldview is still not Jesus-like. So that's why the Lord said in his word, renew your mind. The word of God needs to work on your mind until your mind is renewed. Now, you see, when you get your mind renewed, things get easier. You see, the will of God is sweet to a renewed mind. The Bible says when you renew your mind, you'll see how the will of God is perfect, good. I mean, it's, you'll say, wow, how did I ever live without the will of God? But when your mind is not renewed, the will of God looks so mean, so unacceptable, so unjust because your mind is not renewed. Could, they, could it be that there are some people you think they're bad people only because your mind is not renewed? If you renew your mind, you'll be surprised how many people you thought were bad people or you thought they were your enemies when actually they're your friends and they're very good people. A renewed mind gets you into the world of God, the God world where the word of God is supreme. So it's important that we renew our mind so we can get the will of God and the fullness of God in our lives. And let me say, when I was preaching this message in the Victory Church, it was a special service. I mean, I felt the anointing, that revelation anointing flowing towards the people. And the same thing is going to happen as you listen to this message. So please, welcome to the Victory Church, and let's take a listen to this message. God will bless you, 
and give you revelation. Let's listen. First Peter, second chapter, verses one and two. Stop being hateful. Quit trying to fool people and start being sincere. Don't be jealous or say cruel things about others. Second verse. Be like newborn babies who are thirsty for the pure spiritual milk that will help you grow and be saved. How can I know that I grow in salvation? Verse 1 says, Stop being hateful. Quit trying to fool people and start being sincere. Don't be jealous or say cruel things about others. When you grow spiritually, to put these things aside becomes much easier and easier and easier. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You know, it's not so easy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. It is similar to what we just read in Peter's letter, where he offers to put certain things aside, here it says so a bit differently. Offer your bodies to him as a living sacrifice. But here advice has been given to us how we can accomplish it. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. It means renew your mind. Change the content of your mindset. It must be changed. If you'll not change it, you will not be able to offer your body as a living sacrifice. If I come to the church and do not change my mindset, my worldview, then I will be a Christian with worldly thinking. I will be a believer, but because I have received Jesus, if I die, I go to heaven. But if my life here on earth is carnal, then chances I may lose eternal life are very high. So if I repented, received Jesus, I did good. But God says, I beg you, not just ask you, one could say, I ask you on my knees, because without it, you can't make it till the very end. One can spend 15 years with God and then leave him three years before death and go to hell. But what for? He says, I beg you to offer your bodies to him as a living sacrifice. But how? Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Why doesn't God want us to conform to the pattern of this world? The Bible says that the world is under the power of evil. Some are under the power of evil together with Mercedes-Benz. Some are under the power of evil together with gas companies. Some with offshore bank accounts. But all of them are under the power of evil. They publish beautiful books and magazines, but they are under the power of evil. If I am deceived by a magazine cover, and I think that this is the source of life and will begin to be nourished by it, in a while I will be no different from evil. Have you noticed? If one person reads an expensive magazine and another person reads a cheap magazine, if they are unbelievers, 
Eventually, both of them use the same gross language. Both of them get angry evenly and deceive others alike. In one case, it was an expensive poison. In another case, it was a cheap poison. But it was still poison in both cases. You may ask me, Pastor Henry, are you in opposition to science? No way. Science was not made by people. It is not a human who decided that water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. God has created it this way. And then we find it out. Do you understand? It's not a doctor who decided that humans have joints. God's created it this way. And then doctors discovered it. It is not harmful to know science. It's a good thing. Praise God for science. Can you say amen? But learn to discern where is evil and where is God. That is why the Bible says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your worldview. Repentance without a changed mindset is unfinished action. Repentance without a changed mindset of the Christian has an unfinished effect. We need to tap into God, into God's sources, into His Word, into His revelations, into the fruit of the Spirit, into what is good, and then it starts to build from within. Many people think to be progressive, you need to be carnal. No. Be progressive. Know all life principles, scientific principles, spiritual principles. Know everything. But it is not necessary to nourish yourself by sinful poison. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. I'm not going to read the story, I'll tell you. Mark 5, 25 to 34. There's a woman. It talks about a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. Tell me, please. Why she went to doctors? Who told her? Probably she was told, those who have such problems should be under a doctor's care. She went to the first doctor, second doctor, third doctor. For 12 years, she visited a great number of doctors. And as a result, she spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. She became poor. Where was she tapped into for all this time? Running to the doctors, running to the doctors, running to the doctors, running to the doctors. Once she heard about Jesus, what did she do? She heard. She received information. In addition to what you already know, that problems are solved by the doctors, there is different information. Which? Jesus heals. She heard and said, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. What does it mean? It means she shifted. She shifted to another source. And as a result, she touched and she was healed. She doesn't need to spend her money anymore. Listen to me. Can it be that you have your problems in your family, at your job, in your relationship with your children, 
in your ministry? Can it be you have these problems because you nourish yourself from the wrong source? Okay, let's see what happened next. This lady shifted to Jesus and she got healed. Pastor Henry, you want me to forgive. I just can't do it. I hate. Who is this person connected to? God or the devil? Where is he nourished from? From poison. Do you understand? We finished with the subject of forgiveness. Pastor, you say something. I want to be obedient, but can't make it. I have a rebellion inside. Who is this person connected to? God or the devil? The devil. My servants, let's go to the field. Sure. What are we going to do? We will sow. What's growing there? Wheat. Master, in addition to the wheat, we can also see weeds. We've sown no weeds, only wheat. Where did it spring from? This night, an enemy came and sowed while you were sleeping. Okay, Master, will you allow us to go and to remove the weeds? No, because you may happen to remove the weed also. Jesus explained that the enemy is Satan. As it happens, the devil walks around us every day with a bag full of weed seeds to sow in your life. That is why it is dangerous to visit certain places. Because there he has more access to your soul than in other places. In certain places, it is difficult for the devil to sow weed into your heart. Much more difficult. But there are places where it is much easier for him to do it. I remember one guy, now he's a grown man. He liked to listen to rock music, especially Black Coffee Rock Band. He listened to that music and slept. In a while, he wakes up, running to his mommy, yelling, Mama, demons are in our house. They're chasing me. His mother replied to him, Where are demons? There are no demons here. They are not chasing you. He said, No, they're chasing me. His mother told him, Give me all your tapes of the Black Coffee Rock Band. She took it. And he did not listen to that music for three days. And on the third day, the demons stopped chasing and tormenting him. As it turned out, that music, though music itself is a good thing, this particular music was satanic poison he nourished that guy with. Christians should not listen to just any kind of music. Pastor, are you in opposition to arts? No, not at all. But because of your love of the arts, the devil can sow his weeds in there because this is your weak link. 1 Corinthians 10, 23-24. End of my sermon. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Learn to not live just for yourself. I just want it, because the person who lives this way can easily take poison. Did God do something in your life through this program? Then please write us. Do you have a need that you want us to pray for? Our address is Voice of Victory P.O. Box 53, Kiev 01001, Ukraine. We will pray for you, rejoice together with you, and give God the glory for what He has done in your life.
Oh, wonderful. You see, the devil, sometimes he tries to throw in some tears into the revelations that God has given you. I know, I remember one day I was sitting in a, in, in a service and somebody was preaching a wonderful, powerful message. And I remember just when he was saying something very important, somebody's cell phone rang and I missed a few words. And you know what I did? I replaced them with my own words, which were not part of the message. Or, and I missed a lot. And two weeks later, when I was trying to do what the preacher was preaching about, I ended up missing the point because I had a few tears within the message. Sometimes the devil gives you half-truths in order to lead you astray. But praise God. Hallelujah. Now, the first step to changing your thinking is by having Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you pray with me right now, he will forgive you. And he will come into your heart. You say this with all your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Give me a new life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you pray that prayer sincerely with your heart, your sins are forgiven and you are a new creature. And if you say, Pastor Henry, I need a miracle in my life. Of course, I will pray for you. But let me say to you, one of the best ways to receive a miracle is to change your thinking by the word of God. And when you get to know the truth, the truth will set you free. And the process of setting you free is what we call getting your miracle. But if you are sick and you have pain in your body, let me pray with you right now and pray for you. And believe that God can touch you. And the power of God will come on you and you'll be healed and you'll be set free. Because he's more than able. I want to ask you to lay your hands wherever you are sick in your body. Expect a miracle. Maybe your child is sick. Just lay your hands on your child or your wife or your husband and expect a miracle. I remember a small a young girl in Pakistan said to her father, let's go to Pastor Henry's service and God will heal my dog. They were unbelievers, they were Muslims. And when they came to the crusade, that was the funniest story I've ever heard. The Lord healed her dog. And the whole family ended up believing in Jesus. And they are now the elders of the church. Because God is good. I want to pray for you. Just lay your hands wherever you are sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, let your healing power flow. I command sickness and disease to leave immediately, right now. Somebody needs to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You have been so hungry for a long time. Father, I pray you baptize them in the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, just dip them into the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And I rebuke sickness and disease and pain. I command it to live in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and his power has no end, no limitations in God. And by the way, I want to make this plea to you. If you are ever led to stand with me in this great ministry the Lord has given to me, to stand with me as a partner, I'll greatly appreciate it. And what it means is you pray for me and for our ministry, five to ten minutes every day and set aside an equivalent of one dollar a day and that will be the financial support. Some want more but at least one dollar a day and if you do that we'll be able to take the gospel to the corners of the world and many people will experience the healing power of God and you will be a blessing to many. God bless you We love you, and we're praying for you, and remember Jesus loves you all the time.